Hey, it's auction day, and we're already starting off on a good note. Check out that Corvette convertible, and there's something amazing down there. It's gonna be my next family car. It's a Volkswagen Touareg. No, it's not. It's an Audi RS Q8. No, it's not. It's a Porsche Cayenne Turbo. No, it's not. It's a Lamborghini Urus. That is gonna be my next family car, which has nothing to do with today's video. Goodness, look at the size of those rotors and calipers. Unbelievable. Today's video, nothing to do with $250,000 cars. $5,000, that is the challenge today. What can I buy at a dealer auction for just $5,000? Those $1,000 cars are out there, and if I see one of those two, I'm gonna grab one just for the fun of it. I swear they're still $1,000 cars, but I think I can get something good, like, actually good for five grand and you guys are gonna come inside the auction with me dealers only and you have access alongside with me my name is craig from flying wheels let's go buy some stuff so welcome to a dealer only auction my name is craig from flying wheels and i own a small car dealership in new hampshire my favorite day of the week is auction day and these are actually my favorite videos to make i started making these videos long long ago people were just interested in how dealer only auctions work because if you're in part of the public you can't get in here you need a dealer's license to get in here you need a car dealership like there's a lot there's a lot of hoops to jump through to get your dealer's license and there's a reason that we as dealers come here and it's not just open to the public because every car needs something everything we buy is we buy at wholesale or try to buy at wholesale i mean there are dealers that over spend on lots of things here today and i'll show you that but we try to buy at wholesale so a lot of them are like new car trade-ins when you as the public trade your car into a new car dealer and go buy a new car that dealership probably isn't going to sell like a 70 80 90 hundred thousand mile car so it comes to the auction and then i'll buy it so i'll end up buying that car for what they paid at a trade-in value which is easy and helpful for me because i don't have to go out shopping and negotiating all the time i can buy five six ten fifteen cars in one day at the auction all at wholesale there are also wholesalers here so they'll go to those car dealerships they'll buy them all all their trade so buy them all they'll recon them meaning clean recondition like clean them up and then they'll bring them to the auction every single week and i can buy from the wholesalers there are also bank repossession so i made a video about bank repos and how to buy bank repos and everybody wanted to know like on tiktok and instagram hey how do how do i get these deals well the banks aren't going to sell to you they don't want one sale at a time they're not car dealers so what the banks do is they run all their repossessions and they bring them all to the auction and then i can buy the bank repos which are usually the roughest ones because people will start neglecting their car before they start neglecting their car payment so a lot of times you're buying projects the bank repo lanes and then you also get the used car dealers Dealers that are selling things that might be 60 or 90 days late like they might have a floor plan which is essentially a short-term loan on their cars and when that loan is due like within 60 or 90 days they're like forget it I gotta get out of this thing I'm bringing it to the auction I gotta cash out before I have to pay that loan that's a floor plan and then the other ones might just be lemons like I can't get rid of this thing I can't fix this thing I'm gonna run it through the auction and get out of it and those are the ones you really got to be careful for now in today's video I'm gonna try to buy a thousand dollar car and a five thousand dollar car and I have to be careful in this price range. I mean, if I'm buying like something new, low mileage, I don't have much worry. But when I'm buying a 5,000 or less dollar car, I could, I could be spending some serious money in repairs, but I could also be making tons of money on the back end. Now let's go walk around the auction and see what's here. And I can already see something right over there that makes me kind of bummed that I was late. I went down a Netflix rabbit hole this morning, showed up late to the auction, and this wasn't here yesterday when I was looking at cars. Check this out. Now Craig, you know better. You know better. You do not need an Audi RS5. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Look at this. You know I love Audis. You know I hate Audis. Look at how big those rotors, dual piston calipers are. Look at this. Look at that rotor right there. Now, this is a 2014, so it's a 4.2 liter V8, 450 horsepower. Now, once they went down to the supercharged six cylinder, supposedly that's a better engine. I don't really know. I, I prefer the 4OT, which is a four liter twin turbo V8. Like my A8L, which I love and hate, and I've had for over a year, has 450 horsepower and it's smooth. This car, RS. S5s are fun. RS, aren't they manufactured in Germany? Like, aren't those, that's that's your premium. That's your M in BMW. That's your AMG in Mercedes. Your RS is your top of the line, upper echelon. This car is amazing. Unfortunately, it already ran through the auction. I missed it because I showed up late. Let's keep looking. Don't do it, Craig. Don't do it. You know you don't need an old Audi. I can't help it. Let's go check this car out. This is a 2004 Audi all-road with a 4.2 liter V8 Quattro all-wheel drive. These all-roads are amazing. Wide body, nice wheels, adjustable suspension, and this car has 99,000 miles, and it's a one owner. Check this out right here. Oh, look at how squeezed 
squeezed in that engine is. That's a 300 horsepower engine in kind of a fun family car. And it comes with two-tone leather. It has the window visors, the window shades, spare in the back. Seeing the radio though. AC's cold now, and the suspension holds there. Here's the problem. This is a car from my generation. This is like something I'd keep. I'd put a ski rack on the top of it, put my kids in the back, all the junk that we carry way in the wagon part. 2,500, three grand maybe. I'll be into it for this car before I have to invest money. Chances are suspension doesn't hold there though. Chances are the timing chain guides are worn. Chances are the ball joints need to be replaced and it's missing a radio too. All that can be done. The problem is I bet the check engine light's on, which was normally for torque converters in the six cylinder, the twin turbo, bi-turbo. The V8, maybe not. So let's check. All right, no check engine light. But in a car at the auction that's sold by a, like not a new car store, another dealer is selling this for some reason, there's a good chance they could have cleared the check engine light and then brought it through the auction. That way the check engine light isn't on and then I drive home and the code comes on. Perfect segue into this right here. This is a scan tool, OBD scan tool. Any vehicle newer than 1996 has an OBD2 port where you can plug your scan tool into your car and read the diagnostics of your car. Anybody can do this. Now I try to bring one of these with me to the auction all the time because you never know what type of scammers are at the auction trying to hide things. And if I have one of these, I can kind of read and see what's going on. If there is a check engine light, I can figure out why. If there isn't a check engine light, I can figure out if it was cleared and what's not ready yet. Right here under the dash is the OBD port. I'll just plug that right in. And that powers my scan tool. You can see it turning on right there, my Foxwell scan tool. I can just hit onboard diagnostics. It'll read everything. Geez, I wish this car would stop beeping at me. You can see that there are no DTC codes, there are no pending DTC codes, and then everything checks. You can see right here, these two right here are unavailable. So I know that this car, the monitors weren't cleared because all of these are not pending. They've already been checked, they've already been cleared by the computer. So our emission system is good to go. You don't have to be a dealer, you don't have to be a mechanic to have one of these. This works for anybody that has a car. If your check engine light's on, or if you wanna know what's going on with your car, you can do readouts, you can save it. It has battery storage, so you can plug this in to have battery. So I can actually unplug this from my car and it won't die like most inexpensive scan tools. It is a no-brainer for anybody that wants one. And I bring this with me to the auction and I can't tell you how much it saved me. So so Foxwell OBD scan tool, this is the NT301. There is a link in my description to this product with a coupon code. You can have it shipped on Prime directly to your door. These are one of the products that I highly, highly recommend. What a cool looking car this is. Coolest wagon on the road. All right, I know I don't need this car, but it's definitely on my radar and it will definitely be within budget. That's not gonna be cheap, but if I didn't have my Cummins Ram, I would buy a TRX. Oh my goodness, this is so nice. So nice. Now, Craig, why are these here? Why is there a Ram TRX here with 15,000 miles? Honestly, these fetch a premium at auction, so like I could buy this from the public, run it through the auction and make more money quickly. Like I could turn this in a day. I could buy it publicly yesterday, bring it here today, and it's gone, make money. So a lot of times, the, this wasn't always a thing. Now, like since market adjustments and people are paying premiums on more expensive cars, you'll see a lot more of these cars, but that's changing, okay? That's changing. That was a 2020, 2021, 2022 thing, halfway into 2023. Like people are dumping their expensive cars now too. People are smartening up, they're tightening their wallet, they're not spending their money, and they're getting rid of their expensive stuff. I have my lake house under agreement up north, which makes me really, really sad. I'm gonna sell it, we're gonna make some money. I got rid of a bunch of my cars that were just sitting around in collections. I need to get rid of my Ferrari. I have an Audi e-tron GT that I want to get rid of. I just want to liquidate everything. I think cash is going to be king soon. That's my speculation. I may be wrong, but I think I'm going to be right. And then just hold that cash. Interest rates are high right now. Like I'm looking at 8%. I just bought a new boat, which I actually want. I want the boat. I'm trying to sell my other boat. I have top tier credit and I paid 9% interest on a boat, which is just crazy. If we have the cash, we're saving 9% every single month. So I just feel like everybody should be liquidating everything now because it's a weird volatile time where interest rates are high and everything with inflation like groceries are just astronomical and life expenses are as well so liquidate tighten your wallet that's my recommendation i may be wrong but i think i'm right all right you'll see here there's nothing in the five thousand dollar price range there's a lot of newer cars a lot of newer cars not much in my price range yet like even this rogue this will be too much money that toyota is going to be too much money the crv is going to be too much money the wrx is going to be too much money even that old jag these trucks, 
Like that $5,000 market is tough. Now, why am I talking about the $5,000 market? I'll tell you that in a minute. Let's go find a $5,000 car first. I love these Z4s. But we're going into winter. Like we're, we're already in fall. I've gotten rid of almost all of my toys, trucks, SUVs, practical cars are what I'm searching for now. All right, 2010 Dodge Caravan, rust. There's a weird cage in the back. We don't want this. 05 Chevy 2500. I don't typically buy these. It's too old now to start to get rust in New England. I'll start to get rust down here. These have already been replaced. You'll see some rust there. It's usually rotted behind here. And this was a plow truck too. So this isn't something bullet hole here, rust here. This isn't something I'd even want to sell anyway. I don't sell these, but this will probably be in our under $5,000 price range. Same with this Ford Fusion 2010. This would work. This would work. 2010 157. It's gross. I don't mind dirt. I can look past all these things. This a lot of people can't look past these things, so I'll buy these cars and, well, that sounded bad, and I'll recon them and make them beautiful. So I like to find the pigs and make them pretty. Well, that sounds terrible. This is probably like a $2,500 car at the auction. 2010, 157,000 miles. And honestly, it's probably not worth that much. It's not like a super desirable car. Maybe it's an $1,800 car and I'll sell it for 3,000. Rogues, terrible transmissions, but quick sellers because it's a small SUV. People really like small SUVs. This would sell quickly. I'd probably pay for an 09 with 119,000 miles, 2,500. You can sell it for five grand all day, especially going into winter. All right, not five grand, but are these Explorers 3.5 liter EcoBoost twin turbos? Because if so, they are rocket ships and I would love to see a tuned police car, a retired police car that's crazy fast. I will tell you in my region, these trucks don't even exist anymore. 2002 Ford F-150, 59,000 miles. And that is just surface rust. That is a beautiful frame, believe it or not, from where I'm from. Now these doors usually Oh my goodness, I would love to buy this truck. Wow, the rocker panels and cab corners are solid. It is a four by four. The door still opens. That door never opens anymore. They're always bubbled here. The leaf spring shackles, which are those right there, are always broken. The bed rails are always broken. And the chrome is always peeling and has bullet hole rot holes in them. Oh my goodness, this truck is so... These don't exist. I'm getting excited over an old F-150. Why? Because I just haven't seen a 2002 F-150 since 2012. 12. Yeah, look at the bottoms of these doors. Those are things I have to look for. These engines were pretty bulletproof. I think this is a 4.6 liter. Yeah, I didn't buy the 5.4s. The 5.4s have timing chain guide issues, valve issues. The 4.6, unbelievable engines. Look at how clean this is. Great, great truck for somebody. And it would probably still, oh jeez, I mean, it should be like a $6,500 truck, but realistically, to find a clean truck, under 10 grand is near impossible. So this would probably still sell for near $10,000 when I'm done cleaning it and inspecting it. Wow, that's cool. Look at this old girl, 1996 Oldsmobile Sierra SL. Now, I don't want this car, but I do want to show you what I would do to this car. I would buy this car if I was starting without a lot of money. I would buy this car in a heartbeat and I'd pay $600 to $1,000 for it. And it looks terrible. Sap everywhere, pines pitch, like everything. And it's filthy. White is so easy to clean up. I would, first of all, degrease everything, decontaminate all of it. All of this is going to come off. Watch this, right? You dirty girl. Look at that. That gets me so excited. Get your head out of the gutter. And it would run. Like these were pretty reliable cars. And not much went wrong with them. And I think this thing would clean up and be a streamlined butterfly when I'm done. And then you go sell it for two grand. And the good thing too is like people's expectations are low. Cheap cars, I hate, 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 can't say it enough, selling cheap cars because people want gold for like coal prices. And when they have $2,000, that is like every single little penny they have. They got to get the best they can get. It's a real pain in the ass. I hate selling cheap cars, but I love buying cheap cars and I love cleaning them up and making them look great. And there's like the pool for cheap car buyers is vast. Like my Audi e-tron, I've had that car. It's a $100,000 car. I've had it for sale for $88,000 for eight months. Never had a single, single call on it. If I list a car for two grand, I'll get 10 calls a day. So that's the difference in like pools and price ranges. I'll sell a hundred $2,000 cars before I sell one $100,000 Audi e-tron. 2013 Honda Fit, 211,000 miles. Is it a manual transmission? If it is, no, it's not, it's automatic. Five-speed manual transmission Hondas, some of the best cars on the road. Nissan Juke, no thanks, throwaway car. What is this, Daewoo? Oh, that's a Hyundai. 2010, 84,000 miles. This would be, I don't know, maybe an $1,800 car. All right, we have a Humvee. My blue Hummer. 
I sold for 55,000, I think, earlier this summer. I, I did well on it. I made good money on it. And honestly, I think I got every penny for it. This one isn't nearly as nice as mine. Not even close. High bid was 50 grand last week. Seller wouldn't sell it. They wanted more. Makes me think I sold mine too cheap. Now here is a Toyota Tacoma. I could sell this thing a hundred times, even with all of this rot. I don't buy them because they're just so expensive. They don't make sense to me. This is still gonna get all the money. <sighs> Toyota, they just run forever, that's why. All right, I'm halfway through the auction. I'm in the back corner. So let me discuss a couple things right now that I see going on in the market. I like giving you market updates. Why am I looking for $1,000 $5,000 cars? I don't need to be selling $1,000 cars. I don't need to be buying $1,000 cars. I can tell you every car that I've had under $10,000 is like flying. So five, thousand sixty five I, I try to stay over five I don't like selling less than five thousand dollars but five thousand sixty five hundred eighty five hundred anything under ten like I cannot keep them if it's under five it will fly but I don't even want to sell those things so I have people calling me all the time right now saying hey do you have anything cheap do you have anything for twenty five hundred you have anything for thirty five hundred do you have any cheap cars do you have any five thousand dollar cars when the economy is down or when people are struggling or when their mindset is different like like budget tight like fiscally tight people start buying cheaper cars they're not financing cars so they want to buy what they can with cash and that's what's going on right now so people are saying I, what can i get for a cheap car and when things are good my phone doesn't ring that way like people don't call me saying hey can you get me a cheap car when things aren't good i get more calls like that i start seeing more sales in cheap cars when things are great i sell high-end stuff I, I, do, I have no problem selling newer trucks i have no problem selling any of these things i get calls and people don't even negotiate when things are bad like 2008 9 10 11 12 i made all my money on cash cars five thousand forty five hundred dollar cars and i i always say i have like a crystal ball into the way things are going where are we going right now that's what i'm seeing i'm not telling you that this is what i'm thinking i'm telling you what I'm seeing. I'm seeing more people calling me wanting to sell their more expensive stuff. And I'm also having more emails and calls from people wanting to buy cash cars, cheap things. So that's why I'm here looking for these things today. And I honestly think that's what you should be looking for too. If you're into like the buying and selling market, like inexpensive, cheap flips are where it's at right now. Not expensive inventory, liquidate and focus on like what is the demographic buying right now? They're buying cheaper cars right now. All right, here we go. This Fox body should be under $5,000, and I bet you it's not going to be. 1988, 68,000 miles. So probably 168,000 miles, because this has a five-digit odometer, meaning it doesn't show you 100,000. It shows you like it recycles at 99,999. It goes back to zero. So this has probably been turned once and now has 168,000 miles. This is SN95 Mustang seats. So 94 and up Mustang seats. I like how they got them in here. And these are the original headrests. So the original interior is blue. Wow, does even the backrest from a 94, 95 Mustang fit? These, I don't even know if you can get these anymore for the headlights and taillights. It's a dogmatic. It is a five liter. And this is what I meant. 68175. It doesn't have the one for 100,000. Chances are it's 168,000. Not in great shape. Like it's not in great shape, but it is a driver. It's a fun car, fun, cheap toy. Painted, like repainted so poorly that they just sprayed right over the badges and the trim and everything. I love those wheels. Those were like, this is such an iconic eight, late 80s, 90s car. Chromies, cool car. Let's head into the auction and see what we can come up with. Under 5,000 and for 1,000. Can I do both maybe? I don't know, the challenge is on. So I was talking about repossessions earlier. I am on a 2022 street line with 7,000 miles. So it's a year old and it's at the auction from the bank. The credit union has it, they're selling it off. So somebody bought a Harley a year ago, couldn't afford the payments within a year, like probably within six months because it takes that long for the repossession process to happen. And then it got sent back to the bank. They bought it back in rep repossession or a voluntary repossession and it ends up at the auction. So that's what's happening right now. Like this isn't important to somebody. This isn't uh, their primary mode of transportation and maybe they couldn't afford it. Maybe they didn't want the payments. Maybe it's not worth what they thought it was. Maybe they just don't like it in general, but it went back to the bank and it's at the auction. So that's kind of the world we're living in right now where people can't afford their second vehicle or, or those extra ancillary items that they don't need, the necessary items. Hey, that Fox body is running through shortly. Let's see what that says for it. Oh, five grand for a T-Bird seems cheap. Oh, it's at 6,000 now. 6,400 for that T-Bird. 96,000 miles. Seems like a pretty fair price though. Mustangs are 4,200. That's probably a pretty fair price for a 
Thanks for that car. Five grand. Cheap SUVs, that's where it's at. One owner, green light, 225,000 mile 08 Tahoe. That's a lot of miles for a Tahoe. But not for this generation. That's not normally what I'd sell, but that's in the price range. That's short money. The Tahoe's at 3,500. One owner, but it has structural damage, title damage. I can't be buying that stuff. That could be like frame rot. I actually completely forgot that I'm selling a car here today as well. I have had a Nissan Titan for way, way too long. It needs tires. It needs an exhaust. It needs some love. And I don't have the time to put it into it. And it's not a priority on my list. I brought it here last week when I was driving cars back to my shop. I took my Titan back here and left it to sell this week. I forgot. So I'm going to go look at it. And it should be running through actually pretty soon. Shoot, I guess it's running through very soon because I came back here to go find it. It's already up at the lane. Now I own that truck for like $8,000. 2015 Nissan Titan has a lot of miles. 170,000 miles. Uh, hopefully we break even. We're going to go find out right now. There she is right there. Now what stinks is three lanes are already closed, meaning it's the end of the day. My car is running through like near the end of the lanes. I don't know if we'll get our money for it. There it is right there, Nissan Titan. That's mine right there. What you got? What you got? Great, what you think? $6,200. That hurts. $6,200 on that Titan is just wretched. I, I can't lose $1,800 on a truck. I could wholesale it to the public and get all my money back and not lose $1,800. There's no reason for it. So, mix on that one. Hey, different topic somewhere right there. This is my brother, Adam Altogether, who has his own YouTube channel, Adam Altogether. Adam just started his own car dealership, or is in the process of starting his own car dealership. The name is GT Speed. GT Speed. And he's going to start off small like I started. So Adam already enrolled in StartYourDealership.com. How far along are you? I'm a little more than halfway through. What do you think? Very informative. I thought it was good. Now, there was something, I tried to make them all in little small modules, we call them, instead of watching, like what you said, instead of me talking, you said it on the phone, if you don't mind. Well, I'm used to your YouTube videos where you talk to yourself for a really long time, and uh, I wasn't too excited about that, but I like what you did, is you put it into 10 to 15 minute intervals, which is very easy to do, because you can do it a little bit at a time, rather than sitting down for three or four hours and watching all this. You can devote one lesson at a time and learn the next step in the process, which is really helpful, and I really like that. So startyourdealership.com, I did it in chapters, like step by steps. And in every step is like small little three, four minute videos. So you can just do it at your own pace, watch a little bit and move on. And it's from the very beginning, like how do you start your business name? How do you register your business? How do you get your tax ID? Where do you find insurance? Where do you find a location? How do you finance a car once you get your dealer's license? How do you like provide capital for yourself? All those things are in startyourdealership.com. So Adam's a, a, a member now and already doing it. Now with that is a perfect segue because my, what we were talking about earlier, flipping $400 to a Ferrari. We now have a Ferrari. I started with $400 just same way I started my car dealership. I now have a Ferrari. I think we were discussing potentially the next endeavor is a new YouTube channel. Yeah. Between the two of us, where Adam goes step by step starting his own car dealership. I'll be in it along the way too. We can buy cars, we can sell cars, we can make a profit and start our business, right? Your business, right from the very, very beginning. I love from it. From scratch. And you guys can watch us along the whole process. So if you want to watch us, we haven't even come up with a name yet. Yeah. I don't, there's a link to our new YouTube channel right down below. If you guys subscribe down below in the, in the link in the description, it would be helpful for us. I would love to see how many subscribers we can get in one video. It'd be cool to go from zero to, oh, at 100, 1,000, 15,000? I have no yeah. idea. It'd be really cool. My camera died. There is a link down below. Subscribe to us just for the fun of it. See where we get in, what, by spring is the deadline. So there's a link to our new YouTube channel. Subscribe down below and let's get on with this video. Look at thousand bucks. There she is right there. What did I pay for it? A whopping $4,260 for this 2011 Chevy Tahoe LTZ. But there's more to it than just a cheap Tahoe. Oh, there's sap everywhere. But more importantly, what the heck happened to this hood? Why is it so faded? Why are the fenders so faded? I'm I'm hoping that's all sun fade. Sun fade meaning it was out in the sun, not in the salt, not rusty. I'd rather bring this back to life than do rust repair. All right, where do you go? Hiding behind the Tahoe. Pup, you still around? You don't wanna be on camera today? Papa Al, as you all know him, is my grandfather who has taught me a lot about this business and cars. Pup, we bought this 2011 Chevy Tahoe LT. Wow, it is clean in here today. Nice. 
2011 Chevy Tahoe LTZ. How many miles are on it? Ooh, captain's chairs, third row, DVD. 170? Really? Wrong one. 144. That is not bad. And look at how faded it is here, right there, all right here. So basically anything that faces up against the sun is just severely, severely damaged. We have one small rust bubble right here. What happens when I open this? Now that is perfect though. This is what rots in New Hampshire, in New England. It was owned by Sully right there. And those are not the right wheels. I have a set of these, the correct wheels in my shop look at all faded here headlights oxidized now you all know the game will it start well we have power which is a good thing let's see come on baby no lights on all of you guys go off shut off shut off come on let's see what stays on let's see what goes off all are off but the seatbelt light and the tire pressure light and we even have half a tank of gas that's like I don't know $75 worth of fuel right there I bought this sight unseen yeah and I'm hoping I can bring all that paint back to life and we're gonna figure it out together whether or not we can do it and how we're gonna do it all right let's see if it has reverse all right so far we have power we have start we have reverse we're three for three is the AC cold pop oh hey backup okay. camera pop Al just pointed out to us do we have cold AC right here those green buttons we have cold AC I forget what number we're at but I think we're at like four check marks or five check marks now now check this out because this is a common suburban Tahoe Yukon Sierra problem Silverado problem this is supposed to be a plus this is supposed to be a minus this is supposed to be the power buttons they wear out just from people touching see those two plus minus heat AC all that right well they actually make rubber decals that you can stick on here and you'll never know so you buy them on like eBay Amazon whatever and you just stick them on and it looks brand new perfect again and they're short money what's the next one C105, C105. what is it this is a purchase, right? Yeah, this is a 2016 Ford Expedition. 2016 Ford Expedition. EL? EL. Ooh, extended oh, length. That's a big one. That's like the suburban length. Yeah. And what number is it again? Charlie 105? Yes. All right. Now, another one I didn't look at. So here's something. Like, I'll go look at so many cars. I'll drive them. I'll start them. I'll take notes. I'll scan the VINs. And then every once in a while, I gamble and I take what I call calculated risks. I'm not a gambling man, I'm a calculated risk taker. 2016 Ford Expedition, 170,000 miles extended length. That was like fairly clean for 40, what did I, what did I buy it for, Pop? 4,500-ish, ish, uh, ish, that ish. One, that one, I don't think there's a, uh... Maybe it's has that ready. I think I paid $4,500 for it. Now here's the thing, same thing, it was like so cheap, but I did a quick 45 second walk around, I scanned the van and I just went, whoa, yep, I'm in, I want it. So we ended up buying that as well. And as I walked away, another dealer comes up and he goes, dude, you just got that thing for free. Like you stole that car because it's worth way, way, way more than I paid. 105, right? I think we drove by it. I can see it down there. This Expedition, a 2016 Ford Expedition EL. Now these are made of aluminum and they always oxidize. Freaking Ford problem. This has been happening for decades. It blows my mind that Ford has not figured out how to not make their aluminum oxidize. And it used to just be the hoods and the tailgates, but now the entire car is made out of aluminum. So is the entire car now gonna start oxidizing? We have a little bit of damage down here, no biggie. I like the silver, we have some curb tires it needs some rubber now here's what I noticed and I think why it was so cheap these taillights are actually pretty expensive the taillight is not broken but the bumper is sticking out but the trim piece is still there and it's cracked right here like bent in I can heat that up and fix it and it's missing the actual wheel the spare is on it is the actual wheel here oh look at it needs brakes you know how I know that that's rotors like the pads wearing off the rotors and then it blowing back and then getting stuck to the car yeah the wheel is there the floor mats are there that oh hey look at we found the leak right there will it shut like does it have power shutting nope it's XLT so it doesn't have look at what I said see all the oxidation from the aluminum like see all the powder that oxidizes under the paint I wasn't showing it on camera that oxidizes under the paint it bubbles and then flakes off and then you have it like starting there it's just such a stupid Ford problem that they've never fixed which is so weird all right let's put it to the test take that Tahoe out and I'll take this out yeah. I'll take the gate pass for this the gate pass is like permission slip if you will to allow us outside of the auction 
in our car. Boom, 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 boom. All right, let's get in here. I'm squeezing in between cars right now. There's no odors or anything, but it's certainly, even though it was a smoker's car, clearly disgusting, it doesn't smell like a smoker's car, which is really hard to believe me saying that. Hey, power's started up. Did it have a timing chain rattle? I didn't notice. These EcoBoosts, we have an exhaust leak. These EcoBoosts always have a timing chain rattle. There is a check engine light on. I'm assuming it's for the exhaust leak. I hope it's for the exhaust leak. None of your like extra options, like doesn't have heated seats, doesn't have heated seats, doesn't have navigation or backup camera. But it's just like, it does have leather. It, does, it is an eight passenger. It's hard to find these in eight passengers, which are sometimes more desirable for bigger families. All right, so we had power. It started, will it drive? We have drive. All right, I've been chatting for a long time. We're gonna get these two loaded up. We're gonna get them to my shop and then we're gonna bring that Silverado back to life. So let's get the Tahoe back to my shop. We'll start cleaning it, getting it prepared to fix and sell. Uh-oh, what I thought was the buy of the day is starting to have a weird rattle. Is it overheating? Is it overheating? Is it overheating? The fan is running, kind of has a rattle and that's all coolant. Yeah, all right, turn it around and go into the trailer. That's all coolant right there and I can smell it and hear that right there. That's not good. All right, went in limp mode because it's so hot. So it's not even, did I leave it running when we were looking at all the other cars? Yes. Oh, shoot. Oh. Over your left. Yeah. Good. All right, now that that's all loaded up, we get a better look at this now that this is pulled out too. That's all repairable as well. So this is how we get them at the auction. And then like at the end of the video, you'll see how these look when we're finished. If we bought clean cars all the time, we'd pay all the money for them. So I have to find ugly ones to make look pretty so we can sell them and we make more profit that way. Now let's get them both back to the shop. Well, welcome back to my shop. You can see the boat. Hopefully that sells before winter comes. I don't want to have to winterize it. We also have the Ferrari. We just did some wheels, uh, tires on it, new tires on it. You can see we have to lift it on blocks to get the lift under it. This thing is already on the lift, so we're going to figure out why it's leaking coolant before we do anything else. Make sure it's safe and reliable. We'll do a safety inspection. JRM Recycling, it looks like, on there. I can see it. You can see how bad that sun fade was. So I can look them up to figure out where JRM recycling was to figure out if this is a southern truck or not. Wakefield Mass tells me it probably isn't. We have some other cool projects going on too. Jeremy's helping us out over here. The T-Bird is running now. This project's been sitting a while. This, I haven't done anything with it all year. Such a bummer. It just rains every damn day. The Prelude is gone. My one owner California Car 94 Prelude SI is gone. Eagle Talon TSI is still here and I think it's going to Michigan. And then this Corvette we bought last week. It's weird to see a C6 Corvette for under $15,000. So this car is probably still for sale on our website www.flying-wheels.com bunch of other stuff and while we're at it i ended up getting a toyota tundra that i didn't even show you at the auction i had an if on it i forgot so we're going to go back to the auction check that one i'll bring it back here and then tomorrow we're going to work on that tahoe a little bit here's my wheel overflow and right there are ltz wheels with good tires if you figure out what's up with this thing i have some chevy ltz wheels right in there can you throw them on this for me well we're back at the auction and unfortunately i did not get that high country which i was really hoping i did but i did however get this now i've actually made videos on why i hate buying toyotas several reasons first of all the starters underneath the intake manifold so to replace this like the engineering it's just so overly engineered it's ridiculous but that also goes against what i'm saying because check this out this this Toyota Sequoia has 335,000 miles. It's, I honestly, I bought it because I was so, like my mind was blown, I was flabbergasted on how high the mileage actually was. 335,000 miles and it's super clean. I'll show you in a minute. The reason I hate Toyotas, honestly the buyers, I despise Toyota buyers, they're like rocket scientists. They need to know everything, every little intricacy about the car, they do and they need to see, hey, show me three eighths of an inch in front of the right front wheel there's a spot that usually gets loose if you could just take a photo of that okay and then if you crawl underneath it by the spare tire to the left of the frame on the inside above the frame rail two inches like three finger widths over you'll see is it rot like it's weird the knowledge that Toyota owners have. And to be quite honest with you, as a seller, it's a pain in the ass. It's not worth it for me. I, I would rather not. I I'd rather just not buy them. But this one, check this car out. No world other than today would have ever bought this. It's a 2002 Toyota Sequoia. Now, number one, a 2002 anything does not exist in New England. They are all rotted by now. But check this out. The frame has been replaced on this Sequoia. Craig, what do you mean the frame has been replaced? Toyota frames rot badly. 
and there was a recall on them. So Toyota will actually lift the whole body off the frame, put a new frame, and then drop everything on it. You get a brand new frame. This was done. That is like the value of that alone makes this worth the $1,100 that I paid for it. But wait, there's more. Keep in mind, 335,000 miles, not one single ding or scratch on this entire side. Wheels, not one curb mark. Tires, great, there's $1,100 in tires right there. Oh, I said no scratches. A couple little small scratches that were touched up and color matched. Look at the rear. The window isn't caving in like they always are. There's no rust bubbles. The paint's in great, great shape. Couple scuffs right here, and that's as bad as it gets. Does have a tow package. And then going to this side, same thing. I have like, this is the worst of the entire car. All right, there's more. When I open this door, the dog legs are always rotten. So forget that the frame's been replaced. When I open these, oh, it's locked. <laughs> No more locked doors, gracias. No more locked doors, gracias. What movie? Let's see if I can unlock it. Uh-oh, is the battery dead? Let's see, my first test. Ah, bummer. Well, the battery's dead. It's a limited, so it has leather, sunroof, all that stuff. Look at these dog legs. Like, that is wild. These are always rotted. This little bubble is as bad as it gets. Rocker panels are solid. Leather's clean. It's weird how nice this 335,000 mile Sequoia is. All right, we have one of the auction guys help me out here. There we go, quiet, purrs like a kitten. Thank you very much. Look at how clean this leather is. And then even like the door's not all caved in, the leather's not ripped here. I just ran the VIN, two owners. Two owners in 21 years. And the AC is cold, and the radio works out. We had a blend door problem, but cold AC. Well worth, I paid 1100 plus auction fees, so probably 1300 bucks for a running, driving 4x4 Toyota. That is unreal. All right. I also bought this. This is a 2007 Dodge Grand Caravan Braun Intervan. I paid under two grand for this. I think after fees, it was $2,000. Oh, the battery's probably dead, but here's why I bought it. Hey, this is a handicap accessible van that I paid under $2,000 for and it has so much space these things are near impossible to find and i don't need one and i know they're worth a ton of money but i'm thinking like christmas is coming i could probably reach out to my local school or my local church and find a family that really needs one desperately and probably can't afford one and i can give it give it away for a christmas gift i think that would be kind of neat i don't get the opportunity to do a lot of really good things so this i'm probably gonna give away to somebody not on youtube please don't reach out to me and tell me your sob stories i know it's don't please don't i'm not gonna give it to you i'm gonna give it to somebody in my local community and uh, that really needs it so i think this would be kind of cool as a good deed and i just couldn't resist for the price so that right there was under two thousand dollars there we go i was looking for a thousand dollar car and a five thousand dollar car today i found all of them and i bought a two thousand dollar handicap van that will kind of help the family out again i'm sorry this video isn't even about any of this let's go to my shop it'll be tomorrow in the next clip and we'll start working on that top I think I'm gonna win on this truck. Two stages, no wet sanding, just a cut and a polish. And that's what it looks like. Find the ugly and make it pretty.